Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Charles, I'm 27 years old, currently the co-founder and CTO of Bungie. As an ex-Amazon and Microsoft engineer, I have the pleasure to be working with a number of great managers. One of them is Mayor Smoley over at Microsoft. And today I'll be giving you guys an inside scoop, doing a Q&A, interviewing my former bot. Hope you guys enjoy. So my name is Mayor. Mayor Shmueli. I've been a manager at Microsoft for the last uh, almost 25 years. This October, it will be 25 years. I've been managing teams at various sizes, typically 70 to 80 people between full-time employees and temporary workers. I'm currently driving a very exciting initiative in Azure these days. Uh, it is called the uh, Azure CRC. CRC stands for Cloud Readiness Criteria. Awesome, awesome. And and congrats for almost hitting 25 years. That's a huge yes, milestone. Yes. And you joined Microsoft, was it out of college, right? Yeah, I did a bachelor's degree and master's degree in computer science and in electrical engineering. And immediately when I am graduated, I joined Microsoft, yes. Very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. What is your favorite coding language? Uh, easy. C sharp. C sharp is the most elegant uh, programming language that I've used. Uh, Mac or PC? So I totally appreciate the look and feel of Mac, but for my everyday job, it will be only PC. Android or iPhone? This is easy. iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I like the look and feel, the attention to details. They just win big time and the quality. Just iPhone. Fan of open space or private offices? I would say I prefer to work from home. <laughs> so, ah. But uh, prior to COVID-19, I, I always advocated that uh, in a private office, you can always choose when to concentrate and be by yourself and when to collaborate to just get out of the office and meet people in the corridors. I think that uh, working from home just demonstrated how it is possible to collaborate effectively, even if you're not sitting in the same space. Yeah, I mean, that jumps into the next question a little bit. How has COVID affected your work and your team? Just for the best. The level of uh, collaboration stayed the same. Uh, the effectiveness, in my opinion, increased. People are working a little harder. And I think that uh, one of the things that I, I'm, I'm trying to do for myself, and I'm trying to also encourage my uh, teams to be able to find some separation between work and life and try to have more life because it is so easy i mean the computer is it is just uh, so accessible and you can find yourself working 24 hours so because of covid i think that the uh, people started to open up and share about themselves more you get to know things that you didn't know before about these people so i think that uh, it is it has been and it is still a devastating uh, situation with covid 19 but uh, I can see also the silver lining in, uh, especially in how it affects the work. What is a typical day like for you during COVID? Yes, uh, it is different than the day before COVID, but uh, I started to get into some routine where I get up every day around 6.30 or 7 in the morning, and I'm starting my day with a prayer and with some uh, chess puzzle. After 30 minutes or so, I'm checking quickly the news. This is the stressful part of the day. Getting outdoors and starting uh, like uh, uh, my first uh, 45 minutes daily walk. And getting back, taking a shower, eating the light breakfast. And then uh, start the day by, uh, first of all, trying to plan the day. Whenever work permits, whenever the schedule permits, uh, we'll just take a small nap. Maybe it will be, it might be 15 minutes. This will just charge me for the rest of the evening. And uh, typically, I'm trying to go to my second daily walk uh, during the evening. And again, uh, this time, it's, uh, it's more about me, myself, the walk, uh, trying to reflect uh, on the day, listening to some music, uh, to watch some TV shows. So watching a TV show has become my most enjoyable habit uh, outside of work. And then uh, going to sleep <laughs> and start a new day. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I mean, taking a nap in the afternoons is very underrated. I try to do that as well. And it's, it actually does boost your energy. How many hours of sleep do you, would you usually typically get on a night? 
Um, I'm trying to get at least six, but I would say seven hours uh, is, uh, is a good average. And I know you talked about like your typical day in COVID and you mentioned how some things are totally different because it's COVID. So yeah. what, what did the typical day look like before COVID? Before COVID, it was about uh, commuting to work. It's about meeting people. It's about maybe meeting people also after work time. Like, uh, so, so, so currently COVID um, makes you live in some level of isolation from people and uh, you start to appreciate more the virtual world. It's, it's, it's not a good substitute, not for a long term. Or being physically in a in a close proximity with people, it's it's something that uh, virtualization cannot replace. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Everyone, I imagine everyone is working from home these days. Did Microsoft issue any guidance on how the foreseeable future is? Everyone going to work from home for the foreseeable future? They set a date. Currently, the the next the next uh, currently it is until January. I think that uh, Microsoft just wants to evaluate things as, as they develop. And uh, I would be surprised if people will go back to work really in January. I would be surprised if anyone will go back to work before next summer. How did you get into engineering and technology? Like what, in, what got you into it? How did you get inspired by it? And how did you start working in the tech field? For some reason, out of the blue, when I was maybe 13 or 14, I thought that I want to be in the high tech before I knew what high tech is. But I knew that I want to do something like this. I, I don't know why. Some guidance from my parents and uh, my school teacher, uh, they helped me to realize that uh, probably I can uh, fulfill this by studying electronics in high school. I went to a high school that uh, offers uh, electronics as a part of the studies. This opened my door to serve as a technician in the military, in the Israeli Air Force. I was a teacher and later a technical leader. When I finished my mandatory service uh, in the Israeli Air Force, I, uh, I went to the best institution for technology in Israel, uh, the Technion. Uh, this is an equivalent of MIT in Israel. This is, this is where I studied my bachelor degrees and master degree in, uh, in electrical engineering uh, with emphasis on uh, computer science uh, courses. And this opened doors for me for Microsoft, which I started about 25 years ago, and uh, I'm still there. From your time at Microsoft, what has been your biggest accomplishment? Yes, it's hard to look at 25 years and uh, pick one. I think that the biggest accomplishment is what I'm doing now. Uh, currently, I'm developing a, a new concept in Azure, and it is called the uh, Cloud Readiness Criteria. Very, very excited about uh, this initiative. It's enabling rapid changes to the cloud infrastructure while protecting the customer experience. And I've always been keen about the customer experience. So happy that I'm able to drive initiatives that protect the customer experience. CRC is the acronym for what we do. It's becoming a brand within the company, within the cloud, a solution to so many deep-rooted quality problems. This has been a blessing. So this is, a, I'm totally proud of this. Also a little bit of chaos engineering as part of this yes. effort as well, right? Yes, yes. So in general, you want to be able to do prediction, but you want to be able to do them fast. You want to create the error situations much faster so that you will be able to provide some level of evaluation of the change in a very short time. This is where chaos engineering is getting into the picture. We're working together on this, Charles. When we introduced chaos engineering, to the cloud, this was uh, pretty much uh, trying to follow Netflix, Netflix steps, but take it to the next level because in the cloud, we can do much more than Netflix can do as, as, as a customer of the cloud. Uh, yes, chaos engineering is a key part of this uh, uh, system, of this CRC system. Totally agree, totally agree. I think that chaos engineering is a little bit young. It started, like you said, with Netflix, um, but I see. In fact, there's a startup. Then they recently raised a big, much bigger round, Gremlin. 
And yes. they're doing incredibly well. And a lot of customers are doing it. There's a clear need in the market for reliability. This is a great company as well, Gremlin. I think that they, um, they are touching exactly uh, the right places uh, in terms of uh, how to help customers. And I think that that industry, that sector, is going to continue to grow out in the future. Totally. As reliability becomes more and more of a, of a priority for, for companies and, and use oh. of the cloud. Customers ask for quality. Quality will be a differentiating, a differentiating factor. If you want to be successful in your business, you have to provide the best customer experience and the best quality and reliability. Next question is a little bit of a curve ball, but what is your biggest disappointment during your time at Microsoft? <laughs> yes, no, totally. It's a, it's a good point. Uh, of course, uh, I think that... Uh, being 25 years in the industry, you need to fail many times and you will fail many times. And uh, I would say that my biggest uh, failures uh, were in the areas of uh, building this experimentation system. I, I think that I failed big twice before I was able to bring this system up, CRC. I'm not sure if, if this is part of the journey. I'm not sure if I just needed to fail twice in order to be successful eventually. And I learned a lot from these two failures. Uh, the road to success is uh, filled with failures. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally agree. One of my favorite quotes is from Thomas Edison. It's like, the only guarantee of success is if you just try one more time. Yes. And failures are going to be an inherent part of our lives. And, and and without them, we'd not be learning as much. Like we learn so much from our failures and we learn less from our successes. Totally, totally. If you could go back in time to, let's say when you first started working at Microsoft, <laughs> that's a long time ago, what, what would be one piece of advice you would tell yourself? Be patient, uh, expect to fail as part of the journey, failures are part of the journey. And every failure is a, a great learning opportunity. So it's totally fine. If one door closes, try to open it through and try to open another door and just be patient. Eventually, if, you're, if you believe in the right things, if you're honest to yourself, if you're doing everything uh, for the right reasons, eventually things will come up together. Yes, yes. Just persevere. <laughs> yes. The next question here is what is one piece of advice you would give to people starting out in their careers in the tech industry? The same advice that I would give myself. Exactly the same advice. <laughs> Be patient and failures are just part of the journey. Yes. And when one door closes, just look for the door that opens. This is, I, I think that life is pretty simple. I think that life is not very complex. And, uh, and uh, just taking these ingredients, uh, I think that will make most of people successful. I love it. I love it. Before I joined Microsoft, I interviewed with you. So you've conducted many, many, how, I don't even know, like how many interviews have you conducted during your tenure at Microsoft? I'm in the hundreds, right? Or more probably. More, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I would say that at least on average, one interview a week. Okay, very cool. So as an interviewer yourself, what are some tips for people to succeed in their interviews? I think that the first thing that you want to be is honest. You don't want to oversell yourself because then you will get a job that you are not equipped for. Be honest, be respectful, and don't answer or oversell yourself. I think that also be prepared. Just like interview, just like every other thing in life. If you prepare for it, you have more chances to be successful. So if you are interviewing for a specific job, try to understand why is it that you want this specific job. If you don't know to, artic to articulate well why you are the right candidate for this job, then you're probably not interviewing for the right job. You need to find the right job for yourself. And uh, you need to be able to convince the other side that you are the best candidate for this job. And the best way to do it is by knowing yourself. Why, why at all are you trying to get this specific job? Makes sense, makes sense. Last question here. What inspires and motivates you? What makes you get up in the morning every day? <laughs> Most people want some sense of purpose 
and I'm not uh, unique in this way. So I want a sense of purpose. I want to, to know that what I'm working on makes a difference. I want to be able to make an impact. I want to, uh, to be able uh, to change the world, even in a very small way, but to change the world uh, or to be able to contribute to a better world or to, to make it a better place. Uh, I always thought about customers. I always thought about how we, make, we can make their life better, how we can make this world a better place. And uh, uh, the COVID situation has been devastating. That said, I've been lucky to be in a, in, in a, in, in a company that can help dealing with COVID in so mm. many different ways. And even my specific role uh, of uh, making sure that the cloud, is, uh, the cloud infrastructure is staying at a high quality during these days is so important. When your world is becoming, depending more and more on virtual, so being in the, being in the cloud or working on the cloud quality totally give, is giving me a sense of purpose. And uh, I know that uh, with my work, uh, I can eventually, in an indirect way, helping people. We are coming out of this uh, much stronger and uh, I'm totally thankful to be and, and grateful to be part of it. I really like how you talked about your belief and purpose to change the world to make it better. I, it, that, that speaks so much to me when you said that. And at the end of the day, that is exactly what top down the CEO at Microsoft, Satya, wants everyone uh, to chase after. It, it, that Microsoft's motto is to have a mission to empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. And it's, it's all written on the back of our ID cards, right? <laughs> so it is. <laughs> and um, and it, it's unfortunate that not everyone in the tech industry thinks like that. Right? And it's the, it's, the, it's the people that really, truly believe that they can influence people in a positive way and, and create a difference in this world. Um, it's the people crazy enough to think that are the ones that ended up doing it. So yes. I, I love that energy. And you, you can feel it when uh, you talk about your projects and talk about the, the things that you're working on. And so I really wanted to thank you for your time and, and be able to answer all these questions here today with me. Thank and you. And I know we have only a few minutes left. Maybe I'll ask a, a fun question at the end, very end. What would you say is the funniest or interesting memory that you have about me during our time at Microsoft? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, I, I think that uh, I, 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 not necessarily funny, but I think that uh, I got to learn to know you when we traveled together to the Netflix uh, Chaos Conference, and I was stunned by the fact that you are you've been a young, uh, like just uh, you just joined the team. Like uh, I think that you were just a few months in the team, and you were just selling what we do in the area of Azure, Azure chaos engineering. And you've been the best salesman. Like you were able to describe so well what we were trying to achieve. Uh, I just admired this. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, this trip from my perspective was uh, where we bonded and uh, where we became uh, more friends. Uh, I, I always liked to work to, to be friend with my team members, but uh, uh, this is, I believe, uh, the trip uh, to this uh, convention uh, was definitely what uh, what I s remember as uh, bonding us, and it was a great, great trip. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I remember that trip very clearly as well. It was a lot of fun, and it, it was, was so cool to see the company be able to sponsor that trip and show the belief yes. in, in totally. that area. Totally. And thank you so much, Mayor, for hopping on this call. And, thank, thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank yeah. you. I really appreciate this. It's my <laughs> pleasure and my honor. And I thank you for this opportunity.